For the Auburn Tigers, the future is now. I'll talk about what Auburn needs to do going forward here on the Five Star Flicks. Right now, hey, before I get started, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. All right, the Auburn Tigers, you come out, you have a great game against Alabama AM. and m then you go out and, 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 and we're at a fever pitch. I even go on the ledge and I say, hey, Auburn's going to have the number one class because they're going to do what they got to do on the field and all of this and yeah, 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 that rah, rah, and the fan base is war eagle and, and uh, bada get a bada getting and the bada bada is bada bada. And then you go out and lay an egg. And then dark Auburn comes. The same dark Auburn we've known for years and years and years. All right, doom and gloom. All right. Then Hugh Freeze makes a, a, a change at quarterback, and now things are starting to look up a little bit again. So for Auburn right now, in order to keep this great class together, you have to have POC. Oh, no. I don't mean people of color. I mean proof of concept. you got to show the best guys in the country who you're going after that your scheme is going to work for them. And you have plenty of talented guys on this roster. Now, is it the most talented? No. Are you recruiting at a level that's going to make this roster if you continue to recruit at this level one of the better ones in college football? Absolutely. But there's plenty of talent there. You got five stars on the offensive side of the ball. You've got a great, you've got a great nucleus of defensive linemen where you got pieces. Yeah, maybe they're not individually great, but using them in the right way, you have a lot to choose from and what you can do along the defensive line. You look and we know the receiver room is loaded. The running back room, you got two good running backs, really three, uh, in Jeremiah Cobb, Damari Austin, and Jacquez Hunter, who's been there. You got veteran leadership in the backfield. You got uh, one of the better interior uh, linemen in the country in uh, Connor Lou. Uh, I, 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 you've got options on the offensive line, which hasn't played the best yet, but they're starting the jail. You got a great move tight end. You, you got a young cornerback who everybody feels like is an NFL corner and Kane Lee. You've got pieces. How do you put those pieces together and make them successful? That is going to be the catalyst and what determines if Auburn has it finishes with a top five class and can approach that top three, the top one ranking. The issue is when you pick your guy, when you're a chef and you buy your own groceries and the dish still comes out bad, that can be an issue for some guys. For example, Hugh Freeze, Payne Thorne is one of his guys, and he says, you know what, I'm riding with Payne Thorne. He ignores everything that was on the, on, on the rack in the offseason as far as the transfer portal and says, this is my guy. All right, well, it doesn't work out. And, it worked, and, and when it went bad, it went terribly. But kudos to Hugh Freeze for making the change at the time that he did. I didn't even expect it. I thought he was going to give Payne Thorne at least a half. That's good. Reason being that you were able to get Hank Brown some experience before the art before an SEC game. One, two, you show that you aren't going to be married to anyone who isn't playing well, regardless of how you feel about it. You're like, you know, it's not an eating crow type deal. It's hey, right now, I have to do what's best for this team. That goes so far when it comes to recruiting. I talk, I've talked to probably 90 of the top, mm, let's say, 200 players in the country this year. Go down to look at the five-star flex. It's plenty of it there. They all expect to come in and play and want to be in a place where if they are the most talented, they will play. If they are suited to play, they will play. I look at what uh, Alabama's done this year as far as playing true freshmen. They played 23 true, true freshmen this year. That's something that Kalen DeBoer is, going, is he definitely is using and saying, hey, if you're a guy, you're going to come in here and play. And to Auburn's credit, they've been playing some young guys. You see what they've been doing in the receiver room. Hugh Freeze comes out and says, I got to figure out a way to get Malcolm Simmons on the field, even if the play sheet just says Malcolm. I got to get him on the field. That's really important. This, this, this is the kicker. Recruits are waiting on Auburn to be good. They're waiting. They want to help. They want to see Auburn say, you know what? Get over that hump. Get the eight wins. We'll be the guys that take it that takes it to the double digit 11 win plateau type deal. We'll be the guys that get you to the playoffs. Just get in here. But 
it was scary to see Auburn lose to Cal to Cal to some recruits because it's like, man, okay, coach, what are we doing here? We see it, we see this product, and it's not what we were expecting based on how good you've been in the past. And I think the response uh by moving to a new quarterback, and you saw a lot of new faces in the secondary last week as well. So the response as far as playing new people and making adjustments, I think cannot be understated. And I think that's something that's going to bode well for the Tigers going forward. But, yeah, absolutely. Being able to adjust, being able to not be so stagnant and be so stubborn to the point that you just stick with the same guys, I think that's I, – I, I think it really works wonders for Auburn. I got a uh, – I've got a forced offensive tackle commit that's coming on to the show in, 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 in maybe two, three minutes, Tavares Dice. And you can just tell he loves Auburn. He's talking to the commits. The, the group chat is still tight. They are waiting. That, and, and one thing that he said in this interview that I really like is that he said it's just one game, and that's what they're expecting. You can't let this be five games. You have to let the games that you're supposed to win become exceptions and not the norm. You got to get to the point where if you're supposed to – right now, Georgia has a better roster. Nobody's going to – you want to play them tough. Bama has a better roster right now. You want to play them tough. Missouri, possibly. But the teams like Arkansas, Auburn, you, you, you need to handle business. When Auburn's favored, they need to win. Because there are going to be times where they're not favored and it's going to be tough. Play tough in those games and win the ones you're supposed to. And this class will realize the potential that it has right now. If you continue to put out the product that doesn't look like Auburn football against teams that Auburn should be beating, then it's going to be tough to keep this class together. But as of now, I think Auburn still has a great shot to finish in that top five, top three. I mean, if you get Deuce Knight, the sky's the limit. You start to win, the sky's the limit. But if you don't get in, if you win six games in Auburn again, it doesn't look as good. And I would say that class wouldn't be as favorable. So for Auburn, the future is now. I'm here live with offensive tackle and Auburn commit to Vars Dice on the five star flex. Tavares, what's going on, big dog? What's up? You good? Yeah, I'm good, nephew. Hey, look, so a lot of people were talking about you as far as what your plans were when you visited Florida. What was it about Florida that made you want to take that visit at the beginning of the season? Uh, really just the relationships I got down there. You know, I'm, I'm real good with uh, both of the O-line coach, coaches, Coach Bukowski, Coach, uh, coach Stell. I'm good with uh, another coach. I'm really locked in with him. His name is Coach Lucas down there. And, you know, uh, me, and, me and Coach Napier, we had a good relationship since the beginning of my recruitment, so – you know, really, I was just really a man of my word about because I told them earlier this year that I was going to uh, come down for a game, and I was just a man of my word of, uh, coming down there, you know, checking them out for the first game opener. What did you think about your experience? It was good. The, the atmosphere was good. You know, uh, it was an upset, but it, it, it was still a – I had a great time down there. You know, I had a good time with everybody. Brought a couple of my people with me, so, you know, we all had a good time down there. All right, so the following week, you go back to your the school that you're committed to, Auburn, for the Cal game. What yeah. was the experience like there when you had to visit Jordan? When you visited Jordan Hare, uh, it was it was crazy. You know, Jordan Hare, it's always packed out. You know, uh, every time I go down there, I have a good time, especially the night games. Night games get crazy because we have a little light. It's like a little light show in the fourth quarter. You know, fans get crazy. You know, they turn on turn on the swag and serve. You get crazy with the commits. You know, and uh, you know, sitting that close and watching the game up, up close and personal. You know, last time. We scored a touchdown. One of the players that came and you know that all of us up. So, you no, know, it was real cool, good experience. You know, brought some of my people down there with me. So I, I have, I have a good time all, as always down there. So, do you plan on taking any more visits to any other schools this year besides Auburn, or you think it's just gonna be Auburn? Uh, right now, I don't know, but I'm 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 planning to go to all all of the Auburn uh, home games for now. So, you no, know, I've been locked in on that. No, for sure. So, what was it like? I mean, as far as the 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 mood with uh, so many commits at that game, and then Auburn doesn't put up the the, the performance that you guys would have liked. What was it yeah. like? What was the mood like with you and the rest of the commits? And how do you guys see that you can help Auburn when you get there? Um, we see it as we can help in a lot of ways. You know, coming there early. You know, 
Coach Freeze, you know, he doesn't guarantee a spot. No, no coach will ever do that. But, you know, we have a good chance of coming there early and playing. At the end of the day, everybody has to come in and do their job, though. You just can't come in there because, uh, you know, you might be the, the man at your high school. You can't come in there like that with that mindset. Everybody got to come in. They ready to work. We locked in. We ready for the season. So, you know, I feel like uh, the, with the players that we got committed now, they can come and make a big impact. Everybody just got to stay locked in. You know, uh, build chemistry with this class that we got. I feel like we got a really strong class. So, you know, I'm just I'm, I'm ready to play with those guys and, you know, be down there with them, be down there with my coaches and, uh, you know, uh, ready for my family to come to some games. I'm just ready to be a, a Tiger. So I saw a picture of you at the uh, New Mexico game. And uh, Hugh Freeze, co co head coach Hugh Freeze, he comes and he kind of dabs you and Malik Autry up. What's your relationship like with, with Malik, and how excited are you guys to play together? Uh, our relationship real good, you know. Uh, especially as him playing on the other side of the ball, so I'm ready to compete with him already. So, you know, um, me and him, we always talk when we uh when we see each other at the games and stuff like that. You know, um, we was at that Florida game, we was talking there and stuff like that. And I, I'm pretty sure me, uh, both of us really locked in on Auburn, but, you know, uh, really I'm mostly speaking for myself. But at the same time, me and Malik, we, we got a real good uh, relationship. And, I, uh, you know, I mess with him a lot. I can tell he's a competitor. He's going to be ready to, to compete when we get there. So, you know, uh, yeah, me and him, real, we, we good. So I know I know a lot of the commits have a – of the Auburn commits have a group chat and everybody talks. So after – the Cal game, I know everybody was worried, like, oh, these guys are going to decommit and all of that. And yeah. then Auburn comes out and puts out a better performance the following week. What was the mood like seeing Auburn bounce back the way they did in that commit group chat? Uh, it was it was exciting. It was fun. You know, uh, all of us was there again together. You know, most of us. I want to say all of us, but most of us, we, we was there. And, you know, we was talking. We watched the game. You know, uh. We were just real excited and uh, happy for our team to win. You know, we there, we cheering them on. We 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 knew we was gonna win, but at the end of the day, you know, uh, that that game last week, that that's last week. We on to the next now, so you know, we got a, the SEC opener coming up this week. So you know, I'm I'm really excited for that. Hopefully, I make it there on time. I'm gonna try to make it, but yeah, uh, yeah, big game coming up for the uh, really next three weeks. So mm -hmm. I'm ready to see what we do. All right, who are you recruiting the hardest? Out of anybody that you want to come play with you right now, who are you recruiting the hardest to come to Auburn with you? Probably, I I feel like as as a group, we all trying to get Deuce, Deuce right. to flip, Deuce Knight. So, yeah, we we, we looking, we, we trying to get him uh, bad to flip. So, okay. you know, hopefully we, we, we pull that off and we make good relationships with him and his family. So, you know, we, we, we just ready for that uh for that flip that to come out if he, if he, if we turn him over. All right. Man, Tavares, where can everybody find you on social media? You can find me on Instagram at 404.bids. You can find me on Twitter at Dice Tavares. And that's really all, the, both of the uh, social medias I use the most. All right, TJ, man, I appreciate it so much. Appreciate it, nephew. No, I got you, all right. All right, for sure.